Welcome to the GIE Author Interview Series. I'm Dr. Glenn Eisen, the Editor-in-Chief of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. With me today is Dr. Sripathi K2. He practices at the Digestive Health Associate Center of Texas. He's also a Clinical Assistant Professor of Medicine at Southwestern University of Texas. He will be discussing the new technology status evaluation report, ERCP cannulation, and sphincterotomy devices. Welcome, Dr. K2. Thank you for having me. So I'm curious, and I'd like our readership to understand better, how the Technology uh, Status Committee decides which products and uh, things are going to evaluate. Uh, the Technology Committee meets at least twice a year, every year. And under the leadership of the chairman, uh, Dr. William Tierney, uh, we meet and discuss what are the emerging technologies or even existing technologies, if they need updating or if there is something new in the existing technology, mm -hmm. we decide as a committee, we decide what are the topics that need to be discussed that are relevant to the practice of endoscopy. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the uh, uh, status evaluation reports are already done. They are published five, six years ago. If they are older, we up simply update them. But uh, this article that uh, we have written, this is the first time we have written, there was uh, no review of uh, uh, sphincterotomy and cannulation devices before. Interesting. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. And what purpose are these status evaluations for our readership and, and ASG members? Yeah. So uh, this is a scientific review of existing and uh, new and emerging technologies. As a practicing endoscopist, uh, they need to be aware of the new technologies that are coming out, not only need to be familiar with it, but also to see which one is good, which one is okay, and uh, what is the relative value of each new technology compared to the existing technology. So uh, this provides a very nice overview of all the technologies that are available uh, for the endoscopist to, uh, in their clinical practice. And we try to review this uh, uh, as scientific as possible. We, we go through the PubMed search and also we go through MARD database of uh, FDA to see the, uh, to search for the, uh, any adverse effects of each uh, uh, technology that is out there. Uh, and we try to uh, review mostly randomized clinical trials. If there are no randomized clin uh, clinical trials in particular area, then we pick, uh, uh, you know, prospective trials and then uh, even the case series. And also we talk to the experts in the field uh, to get their opinion. Uh, to, so it's a very comprehensive review of uh, uh, the technology. Right, and certainly it's important for practicing endoscopists to know with new devices what right. are the potential downsides. That's because right. Because anytime a new device uh, is available in endoscopy, yeah. it always seems to be yeah. better than the thing that it, it, that it came before, after, uh, but we really don't talk about the potential downside. So right. re in reviewing this document, there's a plethora of different devices right. that you could potentially utilize to help cannulate uh, both the pancreatic and bile duct. Mm -hmm. And uh, we certainly can't go over all of them, but can you give a little bit of general background about the different types of devices that an endoscopist could use to facilitate uh, um, cannulation? Sure. Uh, any technology status evaluation report, we divide into seven different sections. First is to give the background. Second is to uh, talk about the technology we're going to discuss. Uh, introduction of the technology, basically. And then uh, we uh, discuss the ease of use. That will be the third section. And then we, uh, have, we discuss the uh, relative comparative data uh, and also to see if one technology is better than others. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about uh, the safety of the device. And then we talk about the financial uh, uh, implications of each technology. Here, uh, because there are so many different devices, different configurations, different lengths, different tip diameter and all that, mm. we uh, divided into three sections in these devices. One is the cannulation catheters, standard catheters, right. and then uh, the second one will be the sphincterotomes, and then the third will be access papillotomes. And then we, we discussed each topic. Uh, their, uh, you know, what are the uh, devices that are available for each technique. Based on the technique, we divide it into different sections and then uh, discuss what is available. Given that there's so many different products and there will never be a multi-variable analysis of this in a randomized trial, yeah. how do you come to firm recommendations for any of these different devices? You know, uh, the status evaluation report does not really recommend one device over other. Mm -hmm. We discuss what is out there, 
if one technology is better than others, if there are clinical trials, there are not that many clinical trials, especially comparing different sphincterotomes. We have so many out there now, but we don't have good clinical trials, especially randomized trials showing that one sphincterotome is better than others. So it's hard for us to recommend one over the other, but we discuss what is available mm -hmm. and what is the relative safety and the relative uh, uh, ease of use. And uh, uh, if uh, you know uh, there are any adverse effects f for one technology versus others, right? Can you make any general recommendations for our audience as far as things that are easier to use for initial cannulation and, and potential upsides and downsides? You know, because there are so many choices. Having choices is good, but at the same <laughs> time, many. that makes it yes, yeah, too many. Uh, that makes it very difficult to choose one from uh, the other. Uh, my recommendation would be to stick to what is you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you know, it could be your familiarity, it could be the ease of use, or simply the economics. Some, some, some devices are cheaper. Some people start out with the standard catheter, although most people now, they're moving towards sphincterotomes, but you know, ca standard catheter costs only $60 versus sphincterotomes. Uh, some of them, they cost as high as $500. So right. it depends on uh, the uh, preference. But at the same token, uh, we also need to be aware of all the, uh, all the technologies that are out there because you know, uh, we need to tailor the ERCP based on the individual risk factors and also individual anatomy. Right. So if you stick to one specific catheter, it may be good for 90% of your cases, but that 10% which may be different from all other patients, either because they had previous surgery or mm -hmm. uh, you know, altered anatomy, they may need a different device and you should be familiar with what is out there so that that will increase your efficiency and decrease the complications. Did the committee address at all the issue of doing pre-cut sphincterotomies? Yes, we have. And, and how do you weigh in on that? We feel that based on uh, the uh, clinical data that is available, we think it's an advanced technique. Mm -hmm. It has uh, its own complications, uh, especially post-ERCP pancreatitis and uh, bleeding or perforation. Uh, they have higher risk and uh, it really depends on the expertise of the endoscopist and uh, uh, you know that's why we recommend it only people who have advanced training or who who uh, who work in a large volume centers and do a lot of ERCPs uh, that's when we recommend it uh, but there are some uh, uh, at least there was one report that was published in this month's uh, uh, October issue of uh, GI endoscopy showing that pre-cut may not be as dangerous as we think that that got published after we submitted for uh, the re this review but uh, uh, that paper discusses uh, that if you do the early pre-cut rather than trying for 10 minutes or 15 minutes you, you struggle and then try to do pre-cut that will increase the complication they think that that paper discusses about that. They say that if you institute uh, the early pre-cut, maybe the complications may not be as much as uh, uh, that was previously reported. Still, we certainly need to be careful with that. Right, thing. yeah, that, that, that's, that's our recommendation. Yeah. Any final thoughts for our for audience? Yeah, you know, um, these scientific reviews are uh, basically uh, work as a guide and uh, you cannot take it as, uh, you know, you can, uh, these are not set in stone. Uh, like I said, uh, it depends on your familiarity and ease of use. Uh, one should choose their uh, uh, device because, you know, devices like a weapon, it can cause problems. Uh, where, uh, it depends on uh, uh, who's, uh, who is using it. Uh, so, uh, but you should be familiar with this uh, guidelines. Hopefully, uh, this will educate people in accomplishing that goal. Right, and I believe that all of our technology status evaluations are not practice algorithms. They're just informing They're our readership so that they can right. make better decisions. That's Thank right. you very much. Happy to be here.